Today we're taking to the skies with the Imperial Guard and the Aeronautica Imperialis and giving a brief rundown of every single Guard flyer. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Now with 9th edition inbound, we now know that flyers are going to have a bit of an easier time of it, both with being able to fly off the table and also getting better ballistic skill when they're firing heavy weapons thanks to not suffering any penalty when moving and firing them. With those things in mind, I thought it would be worth reviewing the flyer range for the Imperial Guard. I know that points cost and data sheets might well be changing in the near future. But to better understand the significance, I thought it would be useful to know what we have going at the moment. So in this video, we're going to talk briefly about every single flyer datasheet available to the Imperial Guard Armoury, of which we have 10 of them, including the Valkyrie, the Arvus Lighter, the Aquila Lander, the Avenger Strike Fighter, the Thunderbolt and Lightning Strike Fighters, the Vendetta and Vulture Gunships, the Marauder Bomber and the Marauder Destroyer. In terms of general strategies for planes, they do lack a regimental keyword, but can get reroll ones from an officer of the fleet, who can call in an airstrike by nominating an enemy unit to get more efficient against. They can also make very good use of certain guard stratagems, particularly things like Vengeance Acadia, which is pretty excellent on things such as a vulture with Punisher cannons, or the new Relentless stratagem from Psychic Awakening, which makes them function as if they were on full profile. Often very important when you have a ballistic skill of only 4 plus to start with. They can also potentially acquire further rerolls from Commissar Yarrick or a Warlord with old grudges, although a lot of these don't have a hover mode, but you can potentially position your characters centrally and then have the flyers fly into range of them. With all that out of the way, let's get into the actual planes. First up we have the old reliable Valkyrie, workhorse of the Imperial Guard and can be pretty excellent for delivering scions or other close range support troops straight into the face of the enemy. It's quite cheap at just 121 points at base when it's got a multi laser and multiple rocket pods, which are what I'd generally take with it particularly as the multiple rocket pods are assault d6 strength 5 AP-1 weapons and can really put a dent in hordes. It has the options to replace a multi melter with a las cannon and upgrade the rocket pods to hellstrike missiles and take an additional two heavy bolters. Now the heavy bolters might actually be worth it a lot more in 9th edition as they won't be hitting on fire while it's moving. Valkyries are pretty tough with toughness 7 and 14 wounds. They have flyers with a hover mode and when they are hovering they have the roving gunship special rule meaning that you add one to its hit rolls. Certainly can get a bit more out of its firepower that way as this rule will now mean that it can still move 20 inches and hit on threes just making it a far better firing platform. The Valkyrie's firepower is okay but it's nothing absolutely standout. Its main purpose is to deliver some troops to the front line and in general it's going to be not anywhere near as efficient if you're not doing so. You're probably better off just taking actual fire support units instead. Best loadouts I'd say would be Tempestus Scions for being able to drop very close to the enemy with a stratagem within 5 inch range and the Capic Eagles also have pretty good synergy with them being able to hit on plus ones after they jump out, very good for overcharged plasma. Other options including deep striking a bunch of ogrins or bulgrins right next to the enemy, or filling it up with special weapon squads or veteran squads, and maybe a character for orders if they'll fit. Would also be interesting as an allied option to Death Corps of Creek to deliver their combat engineers into close range. Not the most fluffy, but quite effective. Overall I would say the Valkyrie is one of our better flyers as it goes. Next up we have a competitor for the transport option which is the Arvus Lighter. At base they're 115 points and come equipped with absolutely no weaponry. Unfortunately they just really don't compare very well with the Valkyrie. It's only got 8 wounds for 115 points so it's hardly much cheaper and of course less firepower. It can be upgraded with a fair few different guns including twin multi lasers, twin heavy stubbers, twin auto cannons or hellstrike missiles. After these options the hellstrike missiles or the heavy stubbers seem to be my favourite. They both give you pretty reasonable firepower for what you get. Sadly very overcosted compared with the Valkyrie, the only real advantage it gets is Aerial Assault which allows it to deep strike should you need to. It also does have a repair ability which means on the roll of a 6 it can regain lost wounds, though this is quite a weak repair ability in my opinion. Like the Valkyrie it can transport 12 infantry. Next up and a bit more heavily armoured we have the Achilla Lander. This one's 110 points and is a bit more comparable to the Valkyrie in terms of toughness. It is toughness 7 and has 12 wounds. Again, this one has the ability to deep strike, but can unfortunately only transport 7 Astra Militarum infantry, so you're not getting a full infantry or veteran squad in here. It's unfortunately less lightly armed than the Valkyrie as well, only being armed with a heavy bolter, which it can trade out for an auto cannon or a multi laser. Again, I'm afraid this just really isn't balanced very well against the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie is pretty much flat better in every single way. Next we're moving on to the attack fighters of the guard world with a look at the Avenger Strike Fighter. At base it's equipped with an Avenger Bolt Cannon, a defensive heavy stubber and two last cannons and it'll cost you 180 points and I think it's one of the better value strike fighters. 
If it wants to, it can take anything from tactical bombs, to hellstrike missiles, to hell fury missiles, to missile launchers, to autocannons, and to multi-lasers. This guy does have a ballistic skill 3 plus, 14 wounds and toughness 7, and he'll most certainly be getting a buff in 9th as he'll be hitting on 3s rather than 4s. It doesn't have a hover mode, so it will be moving at its minimum move of 20 every turn. That Avenger Bolt Cannon is basically a souped up auto cannon. It's a heavy 8, 36 inch range, strength 6, AP 2, damage 1 gun. And the defensive heavy stubber is weirdly a heavy stubber that only has an 8 inch range, and you add one to hit rolls made against fly units. I guess the idea is that it's supposed to be fighting you off enemy planes that are trying to keep on its tail. Hell strikes are the same as the Valkyrie, strength 8, at minus 2, d6 damage shots, where you roll 2 dice and discard the lowest result, and the Hell Furies aren't terrible as well, they're 2d6 strength 4 shots with a 72 inch range. Both of them are pretty reasonable pickups, though of course they do make the strike fighter less defensible point for point. Tactical bombs aren't a very good pickup, I'm afraid. They're 20 points and then can only be used once per game. Basically, when you move over infantry, you roll up to 10 dice if there's that many models in the squad, and for a 5 plus, each one takes a mortal wound. Potentially, it could pay for itself if you manage to fly over some elite infantry, but I'd rather just take some of the other guns that have more reliable damage output, even if it's just a couple of Hellstrike missiles. Overall, out of the fighters, I think that the Avenger Strike Fighter is possibly the strongest. It has a great advantage in not having to pay for that Avenger Bolt Cannon or Defensive Heavy Stubber, and you're barely going to go wrong with two LAS Cannons, particularly when they'll be hitting on threes in ninth. As it goes, it is pretty decently durable as well. Moving on, we come to the Lightning Strike Fighter. This one hasn't fared quite so well with points drops. It's the same profile as the Avenger and the Thunderbolt as its base plane. But instead of for the armament, it has a long barreled auto cannon and twin las cannons, which unfortunately didn't see the same drops that the single las cannons did or the standard auto cannons. Overall, this unfortunately means that you're paying 185 points for the plane at base. Again, it can take some various different missile options. It can take, interestingly, four Hellstrike missiles should you want to. And at 12 points a pop, these really aren't all that bad. And you could also go with the Hell Fury missiles, but bear in mind that when you get into this point, you're somewhere in the 230 to 250 point range. You can then actually take six Sky Strike missiles, which will be six 60 inch shots with strength 7, AP minus 2, and damage D3. But at 15 points a pop, they're pretty much flat inferior to the Hell Strike missiles. If you do take the Hell Strikes though, then you can replace the twin auto cannon with two additional Hell Strike missiles, and this will be the loadout I'd go for the Lightning at the moment. Six Hell Strikes and a twin LAS cannon is reasonably expensive. 237 points to be exact, but I think it gives you the best bang for your buck with a whole ton of anti-tank firepower. Again, will be so much better when it's hitting on threes, and but definitely a solid one to try and get reroll ones from, from an officer of the fleet. Next up, we move on to the Thunderbolt Heavy Fighter, which is basically a variant of the Lightning. It has one extra wound, presumably because it's just that bit heavier, and this guy's armed with two twin auto cannons and a twin last cannon putting it at a pretty hefty and overcosted points cost of 215 points. Again, much like the Lightning, it can take a rack of missiles, either tactical bombs, four Hellstrike missiles, or six Sky Strikes. I'd say the best by far are the Hellstrikes, but even so, I think that this thing is currently directly inferior to the Lightning, which in itself might not be quite as good as the Avenger, so unfortunately there's not all that much reason to take it. The extra wound and the repair rule that this one gets, where it regenerates a wound on a 6 plus each turn, just don't really compete amazingly well with the Lightning, although to be fair, the two are reasonably similar in damage output. In any case, they'll both profit from hitting on threes, and I think compared with some of the other guard flyers, they could do with a little bit of a points drop, at least to bring their guns in line with the various other options in the Astra Militarum Codex over 8th. Next we move on to the Vendetta, which is everyone's favourite LAS cannon raft. It's armed with three twin LAS cannons, which puts the plane at 230 points base. Sadly, these twin LAS cannons didn't come down in points when the standard ones did, as we mentioned, so unfortunately you really are paying a premium for them on this platform. You can replace two of the twin LAS cannons with Hell Fury missiles, that's the one that's a strength 4 and 72 inch range, if you wanted to take a bit more of an anti-infantry approach, but then you wind up having paid for a really expensive platform for very underwhelming firepower. Finally, you can take heavy bolters as well. Unfortunately, the Vendetta really suffers from having a badly written data sheet at the very start of 8th that hasn't really been fixed. The last cannons are just very, very expensive, and if you move this plane at all, they're going to be hitting on fives, which just completely destroys the point of piling expensive guns on it. At the moment, I certainly wouldn't hit this one over the Strike Fighters. Its damage output is similar if it stays put, and if it moves at all, then it's far, far worse. Strangely enough, it does have a transport capacity, but again, with the way that the rules are worded, you're not going to want to move it in 8th edition at least, as all of those expensive last cannons will be hitting on fives. Will again certainly be much more usable in 9th when heavy weapons don't have the move and shoot penalty, but frankly this one just needs a massive points drop as well. The Vulture on the other hand is a bit more interesting. It's got a whole raft of different options on the same platform. 
from the iconic twin Punisher cannons for 205 points with a heavy bolter, or we can pack a twin multi the melter and two Hellstrike missiles, and then swap those out for anything of a quite flexible array of armaments, including those underwhelming tactical bombs, two Hell Fury missiles, six overpriced Skystrike missiles, six Hunter Killer missiles, or two multiple rocket pods. The multi lasers, on the other hand, can be traded out for a twin auto cannon, twin last cannon, or two multiple rocket pods. It is a shame that the Punisher cannon loadout went up in points so much for the Vulture. I think it was reasonably well balanced at 160 versus the Lehman Russ variants, so I think that this guy copped a bit of an unnecessary nerf in my mind. Still, though, it can be an interesting platform for those, being able to jump all over the board, and it's got far more flexible firepower on the move due to its strafing run rule, which means that it adds one to the hit rolls against targets that don't fly. That means hitting on 4s when you're moving, and hitting on 3s when you're not, although in 9th this should be just hitting on 3s all the time. At present, I think that the multiple rocket pod build could be quite fun, just loading up with 4 cheap ones of those, and getting a bit of extra AP on the anti-horde shooting. I think for guard flyers, if you want to do anti-tank, then it's probably best to take the strike fighters over this guy. And my single favourite loadout is still that twin Punisher Gatling cannon, as being able to shoot with that amount of shots on such a mobile platform can still have applications, even if it's just jumping right into the enemy deployment zone and surprising a character with a whole ton of Gatling shots, or clearing some backfield objective campus. Finally, we're moving on to the super heavy Lords of War in the Marauder Bomber and Marauder Destroyer. The Marauder Bomber is 350 points or 360 points, depending on whether it chooses heavy or hellstorm bombs respectively. As Lord of War, you're going to have to include it in a Supreme Command or its own Super Heavy Detachment. It is respectively tougher than some of the other flyers though, having toughness 7 and 20 wounds, so it is a fair bit tougher than a Valkyrie, although honestly not by quite as much as I might have expected. It's armed with one twin last cannon, two twin heavy bolters, and its bombs. And as a Sky Fortress, it doesn't suffer the penalty for moving and shooting heavy weapons, which is a nice bonus and feels quite appropriate. Both sets of bombs are deployed in the movement phase as per the normal rules, and you have to have moved over an enemy unit. This could make it a little bit hard with the Marauder Bomber's base. You have to have it finish on the other side of a unit, so if the enemy is hugging the board, then you might find this hard to do. The heavy bombs roll 1d6 for each model in the unit, or 3d6 for each monster or vehicle in the unit, and for each roll of 4+, plus, the unit suffers a mortal wound. So say, on a 10-man tactical squad unit, you'd in theory kill 5 of them. Even with 3d6, it really is pretty underwhelming against vehicles, to be honest. You're going to need to be targeting an entire squadron before the damage gets meaningful. These bombing rules tend to have the best impact when they're targeting large units of very elite infantry. Things like Death Guard Plague Marines, Eldar Dark Reapers, or Chaos Havocs spring to mind. For 10 more points, you can upgrade to the Hellstorm Bombs on the other hand. These are a bit more skewed, where you can take up to 2d6 for each vehicle or monster, or a single d6 for infantry, this time up to a maximum of 10d6 rather than 12, and for every roll of a 3+, then the enemy suffers a mortal wound. The Hellstorm Bombs are just a little bit better against smaller units of infantry, which is the main difference, otherwise they're pretty much equivocal. Honestly, I'm not going to lie, this thing is over at present, its actual firepower isn't all that meaningful, and the bomb ability just seems to always have been overestimated when they put it on vehicles at the start of 8th edition. For example, the Archaeopter Fusilar from the Admech is pretty much just as good at dropping bombs on the enemy, and that only costs 110 points, rather than the well over 300 that this thing costs. If you really wanted efficient bombers at the moment as it stands, then allying in some Archaeopters would actually get you about 3 times as many bombs on the enemy. I guess we can only hope that this thing takes a very significant point reduction when it comes to 9th edition. It'd be good to have those bombs actually doing something more meaningful as well. Finally, we come to the Marauder Destroyer, also a Lord of War. This one can be set up far more as a shooting platform. It's armed with three twin auto cannons, a twin assault cannon, a twin heavy bolter, and a cluster of heavy bombs. The same as the bomber, the difference being that this can only make one bombing run attack over the course of the entire game, so it's not going to be anywhere near as much a feature. The Marauder Destroyer will cost you 309 points, so it's decently cheaper than the bomber, while also in my opinion being far more use. For a cheaper points cost, you get far more firepower, 12 auto cannon shots, 12 assault cannon shots, and 6 heavy bolt shots, as well as the heavy bomb ability, even if it's only for one turn. On top of that, if you want to amp up its firepower to be truly significant against tanks, it can also take a casual 8 hill strike missiles, which would cost you an extra 96 points, and put you at just over the 400 mark. By this point, you are basically paying for as much as you would for a guard super heavy tank or two tank commanders, but this thing very much does pack a decent amount of firepower, and will be minus 1 to hit, so not very easy to remove. 30 shots will certainly put a dent in enemy light infantry, and 8 missiles certainly do some damage to tanks, particularly when you can re-roll the damage rolls baked in. You average around about 8 wounds against standard toughness 7 enemy vehicles, and about 10 dead orcs or space marines. 
pretty reliable and consistent, and I'd most certainly be wanting to pick up an officer of the fleet or two to be able to nominate some targets for reroll ones. As such, a massive unit could certainly be great for stratagems such as Vengeance for Cadia, or the relentless one to make sure that it keeps hitting on force. I feel like point for point this thing is pretty close to being viable, and a small points drop could certainly tip it over the edge. So that's my review of the various guard flyers available to us in the game at the moment. In terms of raw strength, the Valkyrie is my favourite out of the transports, the Avenger Strike Fighter my favourite out of the fighter equivalents, I prefer the Vulture over the Vendetta, and out of the super heavy flyers, the Morden Roller Destroyer is by far the best. Really going to be interested to see how all of these fancy Forge World things are rewritten in the new edition, if they are getting new data sheets, or at least new more balanced points costs. Just simple things like twin las cannons being reduced in points cost compared with standard ones, and another look at the actual base cost of the chassis, such as the horrifically overcosted Arvus Lighter, would be a really good start in my eyes, and maybe we'd see a few more of these fancy things on the board. If there's any interesting things or synergies that I've missed with these guys, then please let me know down in the comments below, or if you've got any other strategies for making them work well. If you enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, we'll have plenty more regular content for the Imperial Guard as we go into 9th edition. Finally, if you have been enjoying my videos, I'd just like to mention the All Specs Tactics Patreon page, which is how I support this channel and can keep making videos like this. All these videos do take quite a long time to make, around about 2 hours for every 10 minute video, and proportionally more for videos that are longer. If you have been enjoying regularly, then any support is really greatly appreciated, as it does allow me to keep on doing what I'm doing full time. If you would be interested in supporting the channel, then the channel's Patreon link is down in the description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.